so for me, the, the my first psychic experience was um, obviously happened when I was a child, and I didn't even really know how to react to it because I didn't know what was happening until what I saw came reality. Then I started questioning myself. Obviously, I tried to speak to my parents about it, and they had no idea. So uh, I had to figure it out for myself. As far as the retreats go, our borders are closed. Uh, we normally hold our retreats over in the Pacific Islands. Uh, we've done retreats in Vanuatu, Fiji, Samoa, Rarotonga. About, I think we've done about 11 retreats in Rarotonga. And we've also been to uh, Uluru, to Ears Rock as a meditation safari. So once we get through lockdown and once everything settles and everyone's safe, we'll probably look at doing more retreats in the future. So just keep an eye on my website and my Facebook page. So my advice for people that are learning um, how to understand themselves and to perhaps try and potentially work it out, I think the key to it is figuring out who you are. So who am I and um, what do I need to do in order for me to do that is to learn to do meditation or perhaps just be. Make a lot of time for yourself, think things through thoroughly and the, the hard part is differentiating the difference between your own thoughts and the message from spirit. That just takes time and practice and it's a, a feeling and a knowing of who you're communicating with in order for you to be able to figure out whether it's your thoughts or theirs. As far as my American TV series goes, uh, we are still uh, waiting for a network to pick us up and it shouldn't be too far away. Obviously, um, we have the show ready to go and it will be aired obviously in the States, but we would like to think that a New Zealand company may pick it up. You might see it on Netflix, you never know. My highlight through my career has been meeting simply everybody. I think every reading is uh, always unique and special. If we were going to single out a few, um, I would have to say Raymond Sterling and um, John Mohi, the two gentlemen that were found through me talking to them, them talking to me, is still the highlight of my career. And uh, I'm very proud of that. And it's very, very special for me. So every reading is a, an exceptional reading. And as far as I'm concerned, meeting people who you love makes my day. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, sometimes working in the crime scene and, and homicide and stuff like that, you can't switch off. And you get on a plane in the States and you come back and you, you, you know, you're literally doing three or four months work in a week, maybe 10 days, and it overloads you. And so sometimes the people that may have sort of missed out on the connection tend to follow you home. Luckily for me, my, my house is protected and they can't get past the gate, but I know they're there. So um, it's a matter of just paying attention, sorting it out, seeing what they want to talk about and then getting that information and passing it forward. So nothing to worry about, nothing sinister. Um, you know, sometimes undesirable spirits do follow you home, but at the end of the day, like I said, if you're well protected, you're fine. When we were in the States, uh, my counterpart, Maureen, was being attacked. And she's a super sensitive girl. She she actually um, can, it's like they, they're, they're so energized around her, they actually leave marks on her. Me being me and a Kiwi and, and a pretty solid dude, I will not allow spirit to take over what I'm doing uh, myself or my friends. So I, I simply stuck myself between her and, and the negative energy. And... Um, my my two pointer removed it from them from or from her from me, and we we're all good. Uh, pretty overwhelming though. If you see the footage, you'll be like, "What? <laughs> it's pretty crazy." So, um, you know, when you when you have strong faith in your two pointer your and your wadawa, uh, they can't touch you. And unfortunately for Marine, she was just a bit tired. Uh, she'd obviously been working on set for about I don't know 
15, 16 hours at that stage and she was just, her batteries were getting flat. So just stepped in to help out my mate. So for me, basically, um, there is a polarity in life. You can't have one without the other one. So positive and negative. People, people, some people choose to go down the path of being negative, getting into satanic cults and um, secret societies and child trafficking and, you know, doing horrific stuff. I don't know how they want to choose that or why they would choose that. I just think that that's what they, they, they tend to, to choose. Obviously, in my mind, psychologically, uh, we're supposed to be born pure, as the question had stated, um, but we all have choices in the world, so some people choose to be taking that path. It's certainly not the path for me, and certainly um, something that we'd like to stop because children and young adults tend to go missing because of these um, sick individuals. So we just choose it. That's the choice of the person. So as far as I'm concerned, people will always choose what's right for them. Clearly it's not right for you and I, but it's right for them. Take care now. Kia ora.